Part of being a software developer is learning new things. This could be a programming language, a new tool or something that encompasses both, a new project or code base to work on. It can be a challenge, especially if it's a larger complex code base. It's kind of like starting a new job. Everything feels unfamiliar, new processes to follow, new tools to use, and an entirely new set of unwritten rules. You're expected to contribute, but first you have to figure things out. You open the code base and there are dozens of files to crawl through and understand. There are lots of developers that come across this scenario. It doesn't matter if you're a junior or an experienced dev, oftentimes the feelings can be the same. So how do you actually tackle this? Once you set up your local environment and have the application running, first thing you should do is understand what the application you're working on actually does. This means thinking of it from a user point of view. How do I actually use this feature for example? Or what does the API actually return? This gives you a larger picture and enables you to understand the responsibility of the code. We're not talking about testing every feature of the application, but a high level rundown of the main features will help make sense of the code later on. You'll start to recognize what parts of the code are responsible for which features. Be sure to ask lots of questions at this stage to understand what the application does. That's why having someone at hand is important at this stage. If it's a good company, then this should be a given. There should be always someone to answer questions when available. I would argue that you need to ask as many questions as possible at this stage, because it's kind of expected. Once you understand at a high level of what the application is about, then it's time to move on to the technical bit. The first thing you should do is look at the architecture. Again, it always helps to have someone have a quick rundown of this. It doesn't have to be in detail, but a high level overview of the infrastructure will help answer questions like what's the tech stack like, where does the back end live, how does the front end talk to it, and what are the main moving parts. If no one is available to answer these questions, then there should be good documentation and maybe some diagrams to help illustrate the architecture. Read through these as much as you can. If you're an experienced developer and the documentation is poor, you can actually use this to your advantage. Draw up a quick diagram of how you think the application is structured. Don't worry if you're wrong because you'll compare this later on. Even if you haven't looked at the code, you may have an idea of how the application is supposed to work. Writing this down will help reinforce your learning later on. Okay, now it's actually time for the fun bit, looking at the code. The way you tackle this can vary depending on what type of learner you are. Personally, I like to start off with documentation. I first like to look at the repo, perhaps the readme. This will generally give you a quick overview of things. If you've set up your local environment, then you've probably already done this. Looking at the code, especially if it's a large code base, can get overwhelming pretty quickly if you don't know where to start. The first thing you should do is try to understand end to end what the code is doing. Work out the entry point. This means understanding the journey of the code step by step. How does the data travel? For example, in a normal application with an MVC structure, the first point of entry for the code would usually be the root. From there, you would need to follow where the code goes. This is why I think it's essential to set up some kind of debugger. A good IDE, of course, will will also help, but I think a debugger will help you step through the call stack. You can do this for each route and then get a better understanding of what the data is doing. When looking at methods or functions, try to understand what the end goal of this method is. Write this down, even if you think it's wrong. Also write down what you think the function is doing, even without looking at the code. This is reflection modeling. It'll be useful when you actually find out what the code does. So now you need to find out what the code in the method is doing. This is where something like an LLM helps tremendously. You could copy and paste the code into ChatGPT and get a summary of what it does. This will save you valuable time. You could then compare this to what you wrote earlier in your hypothesis of the method. Were you right? If not, then analyze why it was different. Who knows? In the process, you might even identify some improvements in the code or you might see some technical debt. Once you have a working model of the code in your head, it's time to move on to the next step, which is actually working on a task. Now, often the first task that you do will hopefully be an easy one or a small bug that you can work on. Working on a minor bug I think is quite useful because you have to reproduce it in your environment which reinforces learning the UI or UX. Second, figure out how to fix the bug will then force you to learn the code base. Then comes the real learning, figuring out where in the code the bug is happening, why it's happening and how to fix it. This brings you into the key parts of the code base, models, controllers, services, whatever is there. And because the scope is small, you're less likely 
likely you to get overwhelmed. You're not trying to understand the entire system, just the parts that matter right now. Once you do enough of these minor bugs or tasks, you'll start to recognize patterns in the system. My best advice is to pick tickets that touches multiple parts of the application. Try to avoid doing tickets that do the same thing, unless you're not confident on it and need the repetition to learn it. Overall, give yourself some extra time when working on these tickets. After all, you're probably not going to dive straight into the code with these because you'll need context. So take account of this. Remember, at this point, you're never going to fully know the code base. That could take months or sometimes even years. Ideally, you want to get to a point where you feel comfortable with the code base. Over time, the more you follow this plan, the better you'll be at learning code bases, which I think as a software developer is a very powerful skill to have. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.